Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how I made these small scale wattle fences uh, to decorate the battlefield when I'm using my 15 mil Celts. Scruffy Crow! So these are my prototype ones. This was meant to be sort of a like a six foot fence, like a proper sort of sight blocking fence. Um, and then this one was more of a sort of farmyard garden fence uh, to try and match some of the sort of reference photos that I've been looking at. Um, although they could do with a bit more basing work, I think I'm quite happy the way these came out. So I'll show you how I did it. Okay, to make these, you only need a few very simple things. I've used a beer mat as the base. I've got either these uh, cocktail sticks uh, or these sort of kids craft sticks from the works uh, for the uprights. And some string for the um, crossways bits. Uh, this is some sort of leather working string. I bought for a different project uh, because it doesn't fray uh, when you paint it. Uh, but I think any kind of um, string or you know maybe even some wire will work for this. Uh, this just happened to be what I had for hand. All these things I already had uh, laying around the house, so this project's not cost me anything. Uh, and basically, it's all going to be stuck together with PVA. Though there are a few steps where I think, but there are a few steps which I think might hold together better with hot glue but I'm gonna try and make this accessible for as many people as possible. All right, stage one is the bases. I made this one kind of windy just so I could see how that had come across. Uh, but I think either a sort of steady curve, like that maybe, or even a more or less uh, straight line might be uh, quite good. Uh, having a slight curve in them will help with their stability, uh, whereas if it's just a straight line, be easier to tip it around. After looking at some photos online, I worked out that I wanted these fence posts about a sort of person's width apart. Um, so these are about a centimeter apart. I also rounded off the edges here to make them sort of blend in with your table a bit better. So I'll do that again. The wider your base is, uh, the more sort of ground you're gonna have around your little um, fence. Whereas the narrower it is, the easier it is gonna be to tip over. So uh, probably experiment and see what you think is best. So if you want them neater than this, obviously you could draw them out first with a pencil or something. Okay, so yeah, next step will be to um, put the uprights on. Now on this one, I just glued them straight on. And if you were gonna use hot glue, I'd probably say do that. Uh, but just doing that with PVA was a bit fiddly. With this one, I did punch holes in the bottom. Uh, and then after it, the glue had set, I just sort of filed that down. That sits, still sits nice and flat. So I'm gonna do that again. I'm just gonna work out where I want each of my holes. And I'm just gonna push this, uh, this is just a round file. But anything sharp, do, mind your fingers. You could probably even use a little drill at this stage, that'd probably be uh, quite good. This is a two mil drill bit, which is about the same size as my uh, cocktail sticks. So that was a test with just the drill. So yeah, this is what I recommend now if you've got one. Point, anything pointy works, but a two mil drill bit works even better. Uh, obviously I'm using beer mats because that's what I've got available. I've got tons of these things. Um, you might want to use any kind of thick cardboard or even like a, a thin MDF would work. Uh, anything you've got to hand really. Uh, because these are quite small, um, it means they stay fairly rigid. I've not had any problems with warping on this one. All right, so next up, the sticks. So this determines the height of your fence. Um, so obviously these ones, I made the sticks taller than a man. Uh, with these ones, I made them just a little bit higher than waist height. So I'll do that again. Uh, so I want these to be about that long. And I'll use this one now as a guide uh, to cut as many as I need. You could also use snips for this bit. It's a little bit quicker. Uh, but sometimes it kind of pinches the edges together a bit more, especially on the craft sticks, you get these sort of pinched edges. Um, but I think I'll stick to the cocktail sticks for now. For some other stuff, uh, like banner poles and things, I tend to spend ages trying to find the uh, smoothest, nicest, roundest uh, cocktail sticks. Uh, for this, however, any old bumps and uh, scratches and flat sides 
uh, if anything adds character to the whole thing so works just as well that should be enough to get me going um, just using regular sort of builders PVA pour a bit out into one of my trusty Pringles lids and it's easy as dip it in there stick it in the hole and this is actually quite satisfying once we've got them all in just make sure they're all stood up the same way all right that's my third one done now if I was seeing super brave or I wanted to hurry this project along I could probably also do the rest of the glue and put the sand on tonight uh, but just for, um, to make it easy on myself I'm going to wait until they dry uh, so one thing to note is this project is going to take sort of four days probably a day to do this uh, a day to do the sand a day to do the string and then a day to paint them it's not a quick project by any means but what I quite like about doing them last time um, was that yeah you get some quite simple effects and actually the time it takes to physically do them is only you know a couple of hours but spread across um, you know a whole week so if you only get you know 10-15 minutes a night hobby time uh, it's a good little project so like I said I left them 24 hours I'll top up my glue here and I'm just going to put a, a, a nice thick layer of glue completely across the base and once I've got a nice thick layer of glue on there I'm going to get my uh, tray of sand and we just bury them under there and in true Blue Peter style here is one I prepared earlier as you can see we've got no warping that still sits nice and flat if anything that is added I'm going to use my file now just to pick off any bits of glue that have gone a bit too far up the sticks so I'm going to use this opportunity now to uh, smooth out the bottom a bit and take a, a pretty fresh scalpel blade and I am just going to carve away the bumps off the bottom here if you've got any wood or anything stuck through you can always take a file to it as well and we're all ready to start weaving on the cross bits all right the next stage is with the string so what I've done is I have uh, done one test piece uh, taking that back off the pegs um, and then measured nine more bits of string the same length this one is 10 high so we'll make these ones 10 high as well because I think that's quite a nice height uh, to go with my little warriors there so it's as easy as this I was just holding onto it on one end and in and then we just go in and out of the sticks so easy, I'm in trouble today. And then once we've got it in place, uh, any old thing just to push it down. And it's alright if we've got some hanging over bits, we can cut them off at the end. And what I was trying to do on the other one, I was trying to keep, keep the string roughly the same way around all the way across. Uh, easier to add the height then. So then the second piece, we just go the opposite way. Uh, just like you would if you were building one of these in real life, sort of one-to-one -one scale. But presumably a, a lot quicker. Because there you go, once you've got the hang of it, you can string that across really quick. And there's no glue required at this stage. These are just sitting on nice and neatly. Uh, so we just keep going. So there's my nice woven effect. So I've gone for 10 strings. Uh, that's giving me the height I wanted uh, to go with, like, with these guys. Uh, but actually you can see you can go as high as you want and just uh, pick as many strings as you want. And obviously it'll depend on the amount, the thickness of the string or whatever you use as well. And the beauty of not having used any glue at this point is that you can still sort of adjust this and move it around uh, to your heart's desire for the time being. Get it just the way you want it. Okay, that's all three fences fully woven. That's what a relatively straight run looks like. I said it works with a curve. I said you can, as I did with my test one, you can kind of recurve it as well. It seems to work perfectly well. And even if your sticks are all a bit higgledy piggledy and jumbled, you still get quite a nice sort of fence out of it. So next up, I'm going to get some more PVA. I'm going to put a little dab of water in there. I oh, myself a scummy old craft brush. Get that sort of mixed in. Probably better things to mix it in than this, if I'm honest. But this channel's not called uh, 
super neat crow, is it? I guess. All right, something like that, nice and gooey. And then for the fun bit, at least in my eyes, we just sort of daub this on. I won't worry too much about it obscuring details because that will sort of suck in as it dries. The only thing to be careful of is you don't undo all your weaving by being overzealous at this point. Make sure we get plenty down the edges here. Get all these threads stuck on. And that's basically it. I want everything from the sand to the tops of the sticks uh, covered in a coat of this. Because this is what really what's going to hold the whole thing together. Okay, that's all three of my fences all gooped up. Um, and these are going to take, yeah, at least a day to dry. Uh, so these guys have been drying for 24 hours now. Uh, and they're all nicely one piece. Uh, there's not really much chance of these strings from coming off. And so now is the time uh, to get these neatened up. Now, if I'm honest, they're not as dry as I'd like. Uh, it's not been exactly... Uh, <laughs> nice out it's sunny old Britain the last couple of days uh, so these st still have a bit of dampness to them it's just going to be a while before I can get them undercoated but I should be able to trim these strings they should be dry enough for that so I've got a nice sharp in fact I'm going to put a fresh blade on my knife I've just found something to uh, just rest them on just so I've got that elevation I'm just going to trim off the bits I don't need and just leave them a bit like that same on the other side this is the stage as well if you want to be adjusting any of the heights so this is my sort of higgledy piggledy one uh, but say on my nice curved one just make sure my heights are all the same and like we did before anywhere where we've kind of pinched it a bit with the snips Get my little file, just file them flat. And I think that also gives that kind of like, kind of widened effect where they look like they've been beaten into the floor. So you can obviously be as neat or as rough as you like at this point. Depending on the sort of fence you want to make. All right, my fences are out here getting a coat of matte black. Okay, that's now that's dry. Uh, everything on my tray is going to get as a little highlight of this gray. Okay, here they are, nicely undercoated. So this end uh, was a little bit too long. So all I did is I just took a pair of scissors um, and just cut through the sand, through the uh, card, everything. Made a nice new little end. Uh, that's because I'm kind of thinking on the table, I want these to look like potentially they're like one stretch of fence. Uh, so I didn't want the ends to be too far away. So I'm gonna get some paint down on these guys. And uh, for this first layer, I'm gonna be using this old makeup brush. I often use old makeup brushes, um, some of which I buy from Primark uh, for a quid or two purposely for the job. They tend to look a bit like this, but this isn't one of them. But the bunch of the ones I'm using at the moment are sort of salvaged from my other half. Every now and again she uh, has a bit of a clear out. And even ones like this are sometimes useful for dusting stuff down uh, once they've had a proper clean. But the most useful ones are these sort of eyeshadow brush type ones, um, especially for doing stuff like we're just about to. So I've got some Rhinox hide here. Now I keep this pretty watered down in here anyway, but I'm gonna paint straight out of the pot basically, but with additional water. I'm gonna cover the whole thing, including that bit that's uh, not in undercoat. Once again, doing it like this means that I'm not gonna be able to uh, do anything else with it tonight because uh, this is going to take a little bit of what time to dry. All right, so my fences have had plenty of time to completely dry through. Uh, so now the glue is completely cured and a big splodge of Rhinox sides that I put on. It's also cured, so these are nice and solid. I'd have no fear about throwing these in a box uh, to take to a, you know, to a game. Uh, they'd, they'd be pretty tricky to damage at this point. So I'm going to finish up the painting on these guys. Uh, I'm going to use another old second hand makeup brush here. Uh, I'm going to use some of this P3 Idrin Flesh. I use this for a lot of wood colours. I'm just going to go straight from the pot again. Um, and I'm going to try and cover a 
I don't know, about half the area I guess I'm going to aim for here on these. Something a bit like that. And so all that lovely texture we built into it when we were sort of weaving it, I think it lends itself to being painted quite quickly, quite well. All right, so that's the first color on. I'm not going to use some of the slightly different browns, the Gun Cups brown. I'm just going to use this on the base because uh, this is how I'm going to base up my uh, actual models as well. I want to get quite a heavy sort of dry brush, not really a dry brush at all. Just to pick out all that sand texture. Okay, next up is going to be some of this uh, Sandry Dust from Citadel. Once again, just painting straight out of the pot like a heathen. And this time we are going to go for more of a conventional dry brush. It's this point where you'll kind of pick up one of the downsides of the string that I was using, is that you can actually see the weave of the string when you get into it with this dry brush. So that's pretty much how I'm going to leave the fences and then just to match the uh, bases in with everything else that I'm going to be doing. Have a nice dry brush of this sort of cream, this uh, what's it called? Mammoth white base, sort of beige colour, just to pick up the very high details on this sand. And there we have it, that's the paint job done. Okay, to really finish these things off, I've gone and found a couple of bits from my garage. I don't have full access to all my basin stuff, but this is what I could pick up. Um, I've got this grass. Now this is a mix of a couple of random grasses that I have, because uh, it was easier to come just bring my little mixed pot in. Uh, so some of this is just some cheap stuff off eBay, plus um, some Woodland Scenics sort of grass. It's all about the same length, there's a few different colors. Uh, it's a little bit lighter than I'd probably want to use. Um, and then the second thing is this foreground uh, clump foliage. Uh, would you call it clump foliage? Luke's green foliage. Uh, and I really like this stuff on my um, bolt action models. I think it's quite a good little sort of looks little weeds. And here they are together. You could probably even throw a tuft or two on, but I couldn't find any good ones. And I think that really sets this fence off. So I'll show you how I did it, uh, but it's pretty straightforward. I've got a bit of PVA here. And I'm just deciding where I want my grass. So and sometimes I'll go down the outs outside like this one. And then sometimes I'll do a little tuck in there. And I'm using the sort of shape that the uh, the sand and the stuff's taken to sort of tell me where I should put this. So I'm going to pull that one through from the other side. I want quite a lot of grass on these things, I think. I don't want it looking too symmetrically, I want it pretty random looking as best we can. I'm trying to avoid it being too super symmetrical, but it's ended up how it's ended up. Uh, and I've got a bit of paper here. I'm just going to grab my grass clump of it. I'm just going to pat that down into all the glue. I mean, obviously you could use a, a fancy static grass applicator. But I don't think it's necessary. Turn it upside down, give it a good old shake. Blow it off a little bit, trying not to blow it too near my paper. And if I'm giving it a little bit of blow, so it'll stand it all up on end a little bit. And then I'm going to go back in with the glue. And I'm going to say I want a couple of little weeds here uh, in the gaps, basically. Uh, one sort of there. A little clump of them around the end here. And the same sort of system. I'm just going to pick it up in little clumps, sort of push it on. And let anything that's not glued down fall back off. 
There we go, I've added the greenery to match the rest of them and I'm going to call them finished. I think they're going to look really great on the tabletop. I'm really happy where they came out. I didn't actually follow any other sort of guides or uh, tutorials to build these. I kind of made them up as I went along. Uh, so there's probably better ways of doing this than I've seen. Um, I mean, I'm not entirely clueless. It's, they've, I've probably picked up little bits here and there from uh, decades of looking in these websites and magazines. But if you've got anything that you think might improve these, just drop it down in the comments or come and give me a shout on the Discord if you want to have a go at making these. Um, I said they were practically free to me. I had all the bits for this um, in my stores already. Uh, it's just really just thick cardboard, cocktail sticks and some string. Uh, so yeah, if you're going to have a go, uh, please let me know and please let me know how it turned out or show me a photo in the Discord um, and let me know what you thought. Um, and as ever, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.